Instead, we plan for digital prize lectures and a digital prize ceremony with laureates participating over video links. We will come back to you with details as soon as possible, but it's already clear that Drs. Milgram and Wilson will receive their awards before the end of the year and that they will be invited to Stockholm next time we can celebrate Nobel Week with its traditional festivities. And now I'd like to hand over to the chairman of the prize committee, Peter Fredriksson, to make some remarks about this year's prize. Peter. Thank you, Göran. Uh, it's an honor for me to introduce this prize. Auctions are tremendously important. Every day they allocate astronomical values between buyers and sellers. They affect all of us, perhaps more than we think. For example, it's likely that you bought your home in an auction. Moreover, the amount on your electricity bill is influenced by daily electricity auctions. Since auctions are so important, designing them in the right way is absolutely key. The work of Paul Milgram and Robert Wilson has allowed us to construct better auctions. They've applied the auction theory to more realistic settings. Their basic research allowed them to invent entirely new auction formats. These new formats have been used in complex settings to the benefit of societies around the world. Professor Tommy Anderson will now describe their contributions in greater detail. Tommy, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jörgen, and thank you, Peter. Auctions are everywhere. People use auctions to buy and sell different items on popular internet auction sites. Electricity markets are organized as auctions. Financial assets, CO2, emission allowances, and radio spectrum are sold at auctions. But different auctions have different objectives. Some sellers may want to maximize revenue. Other sellers use auctions as a tool to achieve other objectives. For example, to increase bank liquidity, to reduce emission, or to maximize some kind of public value. The auction theory provided by Paul Milgram and Robert Wilson is key for understanding how these ob objectives can be reached. In the 1960s, Robert Wilson started to investigate auctions with a common value, that is, a value which is unknown beforehand, but in the end is the same to all bidders. Consider an auction for fishing rights, where different bidders compete for fishing quotas. The value of the fishing quota is not only determined by the volume, but also by the price for fish. But this price is unknown at the time when the bidders place their bids. So they must estimate the common value of the auction, and the most optimistic bidder may therefore overestimate the value and overpay for the, for the object. This is something known as the winner's curse. Robert Wilson's research helps to explain how rational bidders in common value auctions should place their bid to, on the one hand, maximize their own expected value of the auction while avoiding being struck by the winner's curse. Look at this painting. It's a beautiful painting, but it's also a bit scary, right? I'm sure that if you would buy this painting, you would think about the future resale value, that is, the common value of the auction. But I'm also sure that before you resale it, you will put it on your wall and you would admire it every day. That is your private value of the auction. In fact, most auctions have both private value and common value components, including all examples I have given you here today. 
In the beginning of the 1980s, Paul Milgram started to analyze auctions with common and private values. His research can help us, for example, to rank all standard auction formats in terms of their expected revenue. But it can also explain things that we observe in practice. For example, that sellers often share their private information with the bidders, like test drilling results and inspection protocols. The auction theory developed by Robert Wilson and Paul Milgram has been instrumental when designing new and complex auction formats. The auction designs by Milgram and Wilson have been implemented all over the world to sell, for example, uh, radio spectrum, fishing quotas, airport landing slots, electricity, and emission allowances. But designing these, these types of auctions, it is very complex. Suppose that you would sell radio spectrum to, to teleoperators and consider this map of Sweden. Some bidders in this auction for radio spectrum may only be interested to buy licenses in the north of Sweden if they at the same time can be guaranteed to get licenses all the way down to the south. Other bidders they aim for local or regional coverage. So in this sense, the different licenses, they complement each other, but they complement each other in different ways for different bidders. So how can you then design an auction that takes these complementarities into account? How can you facilitate bidding? How should you update prices and how should you select the winners? The first successful auction format that at least attempted to answer most of this question was an auction format called the Simultaneous Multiple Round Auction. It was designed by Milgram and Wilson in 1994 and it has since then been used all over the world to allocate, for example, radio spectrum. So, to summarize, thanks to the rich theory by Paul Milgram and Robert Wilson, trained analysts can today design new auction formats and practitioners can choose more wisely among existing auction formats to the benefit of the buyers, the sellers, the end users, the taxpayers, and the society as a whole. Thank you very much. And those were the live visuals from Sweden. The Nobel Peace Prize for Economic Sciences is to be awarded shortly.